Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Jay and welcome to the channel and welcome back to October Lake in Planet Zoo where we're building this really cool park kind of situated in the highlands of Canada and where we're going to be introducing a lot of our new animals from the new Aquatic Pack DLC. Today we're going to be focusing on the Dwarf Cayman in particular. That sounds good to you? Feel free to like the video if you did like today's video, leave a comment down below, tell me what you think of it and of course do subscribe if you're interested in more Planet Zoo content. We are, just before we get started, I don't want to say, we are very close to hitting a thousand subscribers, which is massive. I was, you know, I was really excited when I got a hundred. I'm even more so now of getting a thousand. That's kind of crazy. We're only about 20 subscribers off, which is really cool. And I just want to say I'm really grateful for all your support for the channel. It's been a really fun, like, thing for me this year. Honestly, making these videos kind of kept me sane during, like, lockdown and quarantine and stuff. So... I am very grateful for all your support and I'm, I hope that you guys have, you know, enjoyed the journey as much as I have and maybe learned some new things about animals, maybe gotten to Planet Zoo yourself. So yeah, big, big old thank you for me. And for my thousand subscriber kind of special, I think I would love to do like a little uh, Q&A special, a little question and answer kind of video. So if you've got any questions you want to ask me about anything at all, could be a Planet Zoo question, could be a question about me personally could be a question about YouTube, um, you know, anything like that, feel free to drop it in the comments. Um, I'm also doing a course in science communication right now, so if you want to ask anything about that, feel free to ask as well. Like, just any old question will do, and I'll be recording that, and probably get it up whenever we hit the 1,000 subscriber mark, which, again, is really close, so huge thanks to everyone. Also, thanks to other members of the the whole, um, the, basically, other Planet Zoo content creators who have been really supportive as well as I go through it, you know, like, they've been brilliant as well, so just big thanks to everyone all around. So let's talk about what's going on in today's video. So, so far you're just going to see me do some uh, kind of basic architectural work, just kind of putting in some shops and stuff here on this upper level where the otters are, and then off screen I will have um, built essentially more stairs and more ramps leading up to the next level. It's all very similar stuff to what you would have seen in my first episode, so I decided to cut that out to keep the episode a bit shorter, didn't really want to do like a 40 to 50 minute long episode. And over here I'm just tidying up some of the architecture. But the main focus of today's episode is of course going to be the QVH Dwarf Cayman, which um, I just want to say has become my favorite animal in the game. I like, that's not an easy thing for me because for the longest time the Indian Gauriel was my favorite because it was so beautifully detailed, absolutely gorgeous. And now it's been replaced by the Cuvier's Dwarf came and the Gauriel has gone up to second place now. Which is kind of crazy because, um, like, yeah, I just, I really, really like the Gauriel. It would take quite a lot to knock it out of that first place spot and the Cayman has done it. It is just so beautifully detailed. It's a, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous animal. And they've really done it justice here. The patterning, the scales, everything about it is beautiful. And, you know, to top it off, it is so cute because it is so small and tiny and adorable and it's got the diving mechanics and just everything about it is brilliant and you will see more of it like as we go on today and I'll talk about it more. But besides the Dwarf Cayman itself, we are going to be working on building ourselves a new tropical house. So it's going to be a big building that encompasses a lot of the exhibit animals, um, some more tropical species, I'm thinking about maybe some primates. Because in general, this zoo is not going to be organized by continent or by types of animal. It is going to be kind of haphazard. There will be like themed areas more or less, like here's a tropical area, maybe here's an area with some predators, that sort of thing. But it isn't going to be themed like, like my other zoo builds, Sanikov Land, where we're doing it by the continents. So I'm happy to include animals in different places. And I think it does help me build a little bit more uh, confidently knowing that I'm not really having to restrict myself in any sort of way. Um, I'm building the Dwarf Cayman habitat up here, which is probably a bit of a precarious spot considering how close it is to the edge of the cliff. So maybe as we go along, I will be adding more like support structures and stuff, just to kind of make it look like there is more to support it. But overall, the tropical house is going to be a very big building and it is going to be very close to this cliff edge. So we will need to think about how we're going to make it look more stable. One thing to note though is that the truck house is not going to be finished today, not by a long shot, we have a lot more work to do. The Cayman habitat itself will be finished and I will have done some decent work on the outside of the tropical house, 
but there will be a good long way to go. Um, I think maybe we're done maybe 30 to 40 percent of the tropical house. A lot of the infrastructure like the base infrastructure and the pathwork is done but there's gonna be a lot more to it. Uh, I'm thinking as far as species go I would like to introduce um, of course the caimans in there but I would like to introduce the saltwater crocodile as well somehow. I, I know that's gonna need a much larger space so I'm not 100% sure we can but uh, I'll try and make it work. Mainly because the saltwater crocodile of course has the new diving animations as well and I really want to see it dive. Um, if I can't fit it in here I'll probably revamp the saltwater crocodile habitat in Senekov land because I'm not the biggest fan of how it is right now. Um, so yeah I'll probably go there. Uh, and we have had a lot of new subscribers recently so let me just elaborate on what Sanikov land is. That is my long running uh, Planet Zoo project. It is up to like episode 33 now so feel free to go and binge watch that if you like. Um, it, it will make for a long binge watch but it is a lot of fun. I do really like that series. It is kind of like my pride and joy almost of the whole Planet Zoo, this whole Planet Zoo adventure. Well um, now we're actually getting to work on the exterior walls of the tropical house. So I'm going to use the stained wood a lot, but it's almost like kind of a base for what the wall will eventually look like and we haven't really finished it. This is again just very much early stages and experimenting with how it's going to look. I wanted this angle look to it because of course we're in the mountains. I wanted to evoke that idea of like, you know, kind of an almost like a pyramidal structure where it's kind of angled towards the top and kind of finishes off in a bit more of a peak. Um, I'm building this hole in them and these holes are going to be very useful I think because I'm planning a habitat that kind of straddles the outside and the inside of this building and uh, it's going to be for climbing animals so feel free to guess what that might be in the comments down below. And um, yeah, I think that's going to be quite fun. So I'm going to try and make it work with these little uh, holes here so that it kind of acts as an entry and exit point for the animals. So I think that'll be a lot of fun. But we'll see how that works out because we are going to be working in some very, very, very tight spaces in here. We are definitely um, not got the most space. I did want the uh, caiman to have quite a reasonably sized habitat, I didn't want it to be too big for them but even this does feel quite big when you have a look at it later on because the caiman are so tiny and they're so cute. The dwarf caiman are beautiful. Just oh my god they have such big eyes too for their body size. Like really really big eyes which makes sense they need uh, relatively good vision in murky waters and stuff like that. And of course like all crocodilians I believe they do have that um, I think it's called a nictating membrane that covers their eyes when they go um, when they dive so like it's like almost a second set of eyelids that protects their eyes uh, while allowing them to still see underwater. Here you can see me just kind of start with the basic terrain work in their habitat. I've just um, created a little bit of an archway I think that, that looks pretty cool and then using these uh, four rocks everywhere because they are my new favorite thing in the game. Like they are incredible. I think most Planet Zoo content creators have absolutely been going wild with these uh, new four rocks because they're just amazing. They're so versatile, so useful. I, like I barely use the real rocks anymore, which is kind of crazy because I love the real rocks too. Uh, speaking of rocks, by the way, if you're all uh, interested in any sort of rock work or learning how to do rock work the way I do, um, I have a tutorial from ages ago that I made and I'll link it um, now up in the uh, corner of the video if I remember and um, that basically goes over kind of my style of rock work and just gives you a few ideas I guess as to how to do rock work in your own habitat and I think it's pretty useful to get and get started. I might do a new tutorial at some point with these four rocks. Let me know what you think. Would you like to see a tutorial like that? Do you think it's useful? Uh, let me know and I will if you you know if enough people are interested I'll definitely get on that because I think rock work can really make or break a habitat sometimes. Like if you do it well, it just really brings things together. And with these new four rocks, it just makes it look very, very realistic. And not even realistic as in like naturalistic. It looks realistic as in like this is what a zoo would do with four rocks. So absolutely happy to make a toy on that. Here I am using some of the new aquatic plants. Really big fan of all of them. They're really nice. These new lily pads are pretty cool. Uh, called the blue lotus, I believe. Uh, some mangroves here and there but um, also at the bottom those underwater hydrillas are so great for just covering really big areas. 
I'm using some of these bull rushes as well. Um, I haven't really used them very much, but they do look nice and I feel like they do suit the slightly more temperate vibe of this park as opposed to the common reeds. And they, they fit in pretty well, even if this is the interior of a tropical house. So again, being the interior of the tropical house, I feel like I'm kind of um, okay to use slightly more tropical plants. And so we will experiment a bit more with those as we go around. Here's just me like working on the staff area, relatively, um, you know, it's a relatively simple staff area. I'm just gonna hide most of it. You can just see the door and like the back of it. There'll be a keeper hut in there. Um, I will have to like fiddle around with it because like I said, we're not, we've not got a lot of space and I really had to like explore like different pathing options. And here's an issue I didn't realize I would have a lot of today. Uh, well, not today, but during this build. Because the path to the left of the habitat goes like at an angle, it's hard to connect paths going off the side of it. So you're gonna see me like fiddle around with different ideas and stairs and ramps and like how to like make it uh, feasible that people could walk onto it without like tripping and falling. So here's me experimenting with some ideas here like using the stained wood panels to make some stairs. They eventually come out looking okay, but uh, yeah, they're definitely not like uh, ideal basically. Uh, but one thing I will do later on is, um, I think, introduce the idea that there will be like um, these edges to these, well, basically, I'll just explain it when you see it, but basically edges to all of these stair pieces that are colored differently so that people can tell uh, more clearly where the edges are so they don't fall basically. <laughs> but yeah, there, there's the basic idea for the stairs leading onto that upper viewing platform. So that viewing platform is also acting as the roof for the the uh, staff area and people can go on there and look down into the Cayman habitat. So there are multiple viewing platforms so you can view it from above or they can view it from the, the underwater area basically. Here's me experimenting with the idea of like stairs going up this um, thingy but I realized very quickly it would just take too much effort and I didn't think it warranted it. The path as a whole might be a bit too steep though not necessarily um, convinced that people would really be able to access it that well but you know it we make do <laughs> here's me again continuing on with the with this stair area i do fiddle around with it quite a bit basically um but i eventually get to an arrangement that i kind of like and looks somewhat feasible so that people can walk onto it from the main path and i think it looks okay like i feel like you know with some effort people can get up there i've added some a ramp in as well and you know it, it links up to the top layer so people are not going to like trip and fall and people with uh, accessibility issues can still get up there as well. Here's more rock work because again the full rocks are amazing and deserve to be used everywhere. They are the actual best. <laughs> Using some of these full tree trunk and root pieces as well to kind of give a bit more uh, atmosphere to the area I guess. And here's me going onto the side and adding into some of these side walls as well. They're not going to stay purple of course, they're going to be a different colour. Um, but even the colours I choose in this episode might not be final. I will be working a lot more on the exterior of the, ha um, the whole tropical house in the next few episodes. Here's me trying to figure out what sort of like plants to use um, for the land areas. I don't think I end up using an awful lot of plants for the land areas besides more like mangroves in the end. And just colouring the walls to give it a more swampy vibe as well. Um, yeah, I can't remember what else I do actually here. Just more rocks, I guess. And adding some windows so the staff, uh, the staff can actually peek into the cave and habitat and make sure they're all doing okay. And now we're going to start working on how this uh, habitat integrates into the, the wider tropical house as a whole. So you can see these, these exterior walls for the habitat are going to essentially become like um, the borders of planters so you'll see in a bit I'll just kind of uh, round those out with some more concrete pieces and then add in some plants on top here's me trying to figure out the uh, fish feeder and uh, some more enrichment for the animals as well I love the mud pits they're just really cool and I love seeing animals waddle in them um, I don't think we see the the um, caiman use it in this episode but if I catch them using it I'll definitely add them into the cinematics of another episode at some point as well uh, and for those of you who do like uh, the cinematics, um, at the end of today's episode, you will be able to see 
quite a lot of really cool shots of both the Cayman swimming and also shots of the park as a whole so far. And from a bird's eye view it actually looks pretty cool because uh, one interesting thing I've noticed is because I stuck to kind of the grid system for the path, like right from the start, it looks almost kind of like a circuit board from above. It's a lot of straight lines and sharp edges mashed with the like the smooth lines of the mountains. I think it looks really cool. So I'm very happy with how that turned out. I think here is where I realized the staff actually have no way to get down there. So I had to really finagle uh, around with the terrain a lot and like move things and really try and figure out how on earth the staff are going to get down here. I think eventually I had to just flat out move the, um, the keeper hut. Yeah, I got rid of the keeper hut, I had to make these stairs. I will cover all this up later just to make it look a lot neater, but right now that was the only way the staff could actually get down there, so that was what I had to do. Here's me, um, what am I doing? I'm just adding a proper clean roof underneath that to get rid of the path curbs. I always get rid of the path curbs because they look awful, honestly, so like that was you know standard procedure on my part uh, here's where i start working on the planters they actually look quite cool i love the the unique shapes they kind of get because of the uh different sides that we are working with here and um i end up using a lot of these new like um wooden like planted panels which are amazing these guys these are the best like they work so well here and just they open up so many pop, uh, possibilities for like planted walls, for green roofs, that sort of thing. And they just work really well in planters, especially in this tropical area here. I wanted to try a few planters. I tried out this Cecropia at first, but it didn't really work. Um, I also used some of these, uh, I think they're cowberries or crowberries, one of them, to just add in some more different colors. And then these guys, ah, these giant rhubarbs are beautiful. I love them so much. They're just huge and their leaves are big and so well textured. They look so, so, so good. Like, absolutely love having them here. Here I start fiddling a little bit more with the outside as well, trying out some different roof ideas. I'm not 100% convinced about the, um, the recolorable slate roofs. So let me know in the comments what you think of it because I might switch that out. Just because they look a bit, I don't know, a bit odd for my taste. I might end up switching it out with like the actual uh, regular slate roof instead of the recolorable version, but I don't know. Here I'm adding in some faux stairs that link the um, bottom section with the upper section. Unfortunately the path wouldn't play nice and I couldn't add like a real set of stairs. Um, but guess won't, so guess won't use the- oh actually did I? Did I manage to successfully use some stairs here? Oh I totally did, huh? Okay so I did, so guess will use this, but um... For like accessibility access, I imagine people would have to go back out and curve around, which isn't too much of a distance, so um, they still can access the ramp up there. But yeah, no, I, I completely forgot and I just replaced those main stairs with um, uh, some stained wood ones just to give it a bit more interest. And to clean it up again, I added more of these concrete barriers, which I will again form into planters as well and fill them up with the, the almost the same technique with the mulch and then with the uh, wooden panels with the planters on them so and then of course loads of the big rhubarb plants because god they're beautiful such great plants rhubarb as a whole is just great like adds a plant in real life too i remember um back in my old university where i did my undergraduate degree um they had like this big garden where you could pick your own plants and they grew rhubarb there and i think one of my flatmates back in like my first year, which was what, 2015, 2016? Ooh, I'm getting old. <laughs> but uh, yeah, back in my first year, um, we picked some rhubarb and made like a rhubarb stew or something, and that was really tasty. So yeah, it's a, it's a nice flavor. That's just all I've got to say about that. <laughs> more uh, more decorating here in the viewing area for the gar uh, for the Cayman, not the Gariel. Um, adding in some just some education boards and you know, a little, little uh, screen there with the animal itself. I put out an exhibit there, but I decided I didn't like it there, so I just deleted it in a bit. Here again, just planting some of these planters, just getting them all green and nice. Um, instead of, yeah, instead of that exhibit there, I, I'll get rid of it in a second, but I end up using that space over there as more of an educator area, so I've plopped down an educator as well. So I haven't seen them in, being used yet, but that's because I haven't opened the zoo. <laughs> I don't know why, I think I'm just nervous to actually do it. So I probably will open the zoo when we have like a couple more species so the guests have a bit more space to wander around and they're not gonna like 
completely just cloud in one area, which wouldn't be great, to be honest. Um, here's me messing around with the roofs a bit more as well, and uh, just kind of getting a bit more of an idea of what I would like this to look, and uh, messing around with colors as well. So right now, I've settled on this kind of pale turquoise color with some like slightly more white accents, which you'll see in a bit. Um, but that is not by any means final. I think I will make the lower sections of the walls also darker, just to um, give it more interest. So that is the kind of pale white as well that I've chosen, the pale grey maybe. And uh, it is, again, very much up for change. Let me know what you guys think of the colour specifically. I feel like I need a bit more feedback on that. Here's more four rocks again, just to um, adjust the stairs. Here's me using the fence pieces to create some railings. These new fence pieces are great for stair railings, by the way, just so you know. Um, here's me covering up the floor as well. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that this area was well covered and um, you couldn't see the, the actual flooring underneath. And then to the side here, you're going to see me create a slightly elevated area in a second. But first, I wanted to put a hole in the sidewall because I realized there are no windows. <laughs> so I wanted to get some natural light in. But uh, it was a little bit tricky, a little bit finicky here, but managed to get it sorted. And you have another, another hole there. Uh, I'll have to put in some glass for that one because I don't think I'm going to use that specific one as um, as an animal entrance because it's too close to the edge. As you can see, it's really close to the edge and it kind of looks unrealistic. So I think I'm going to have to do some like interesting rock work to make like a little bit of a, I don't know, look, make it look like there's some support going on out there. So that's something I'll either do off screen or in the next episode. So what am I doing next here? So I've made a little platform there as you can see and now I'm putting in all the exhibits that will be um, displaying the tropical animals here. Of course I will be including the new Diamondback Terrapin that we got in the in the aquatic DLC but I will also display some of the other like um, reptiles and insects and stuff that we got just with the base game and with the previous DLCs. Just things you would expect to find in a tropical house you know. And here's where I'm going to add the um, the educator stand. It took me a second to fill around with the path, but got that sorted. And then now I'm just trying to make the ground area a bit more interesting. Uh, end up getting rid of the circle. And this is what I was talking about earlier with the, like, kind of like getting the edges of all the paths and stuff where there's a slight dip uh, colored in with like some orange or some yellow, just so people know it's there and they don't like trip up on it. And I think it also looks really good basically. Um, I just think it makes it look a lot more realistic and at the same time it the color kind of fits like I like the contrast between that orange and the the, the deeper blue greens that we have going on everywhere. They just really works I think. And then down here I decided to mess around with these hexagons and I think they look pretty cool so they end up staying and um, they just color them a few different colors and it looks pretty cool and I think gives this a very like sciencey vibe which I'm always up for who doesn't like sciencey vibe am I right <laughs> yeah I just think it looks nice and then uh, I had to readjust the educator stand a little bit but uh, after that it was all good once we do have guests and stuff in the park I will turn on the educating uh, the educator stand so people can actually see what's going on I'm just making the entrance uh, doorway here very much in the same style as the rest of the wall just kind of inverted so it looks more welcoming um, I will have to put in some glass doors and stuff because I imagine the interior of the tropical house will be temperature controlled of course because we are going to have more tropical animals. I imagine you want to give people a more humid vibe. Again we are based in a very very cold region of the world, it will snow in this park. So I think it is absolutely warranted to have a tropical house instead of having these animals be outdoors. I don't know, I, know. I think it's pretty cool. Like originally this park really did start as like I just wanted to do like an outdoor kind of wildlife sanctuary with mainly you know cold weather animals but the more it's developed into a zoo the more I think it's pretty cool and because of the the already you know the pre-made elevation on this map it just gives me a lot of like it kind of forces me to be creative about how I'm gonna do a lot of these things so I really like that using some of these caiman statues which are beautiful made these two like cuddle up in the corner here and then um, what am I doing next? Here's me just working on like some detail for this gap in between here. I've decided to make like a multi-layered kind of um, planter system thing basically. It's a little bit too brutalist but uh, I think it works in contrast with the stained wood kind of paneling. Again I'm very much a fan of meshing the whole uh, like 
rustic architecture with modern architecture. I'm sure long term view, long time viewers of the channel are very aware that's kind of my, my style. And I think it works here as well, basically. Now we're coming uh, towards the end of the video now. It's not an awful lot left. Uh, just to say, I think the, the only other things we do here are we're going to introduce some lights and stuff because I do want this zoo to look good at night. And you will see some of the lights in the um, in the uh, cinematics at the end. And of course, I'll be working on the roof as well a little bit uh, towards the end of this video. But um, you know, taking some time to just again, I want to I want to really say a big thank you to all of you for supporting my channel for as long as you have. It, it did really do, it did start as a hobby. It is still a hobby. But I didn't expect it to get as much traction as it did and I was really happy to know that, you know, people were interested. And I love that you guys have followed me along for the ride and I just want to, you know, just want to say thank you, basically. And before I get too sappy, I just want to say again, you know, feel free, leave me questions down in the comments for me to answer in my Q&A. Or, you know, visit my Discord if you like and you can um, put a question there, anywhere in the, I'll probably put a link down there. And of course, um, feel free to message me on, like, on Discord, if you have a question you want to ask more in private, and I'll of course screenshot it for the video later on. But yeah, all these, um, I'm more than happy to take questions for a Q&A video basically is what I'm saying. <laughs> so uh, anything would be absolutely fine. And um, yeah, it's been, it's been a fun journey, you know, over this year. And Planet Zoo has come a long way since it first released. I was so thrilled when it first released, I've just been wanting a game like this for well over well, well over a decade basically like ever since Zoo Tycoon 2 came out so maybe like 15 years so you know it's it was well worth the wait it's just it's become one of my favorite games ever and it has become a a part of like my daily like well not my daily life but like just part of my life in general it's really nice to have something like this because it's a nice escape from reality sometimes and it's a very wholesome game, you know? You just hang out with your animals, build all these cool habitats, and then share them with people, which is awesome and a lot of fun. And the DLCs that have come out have just made it better and better and better, and every DLC seems to be getting better, so... Truly brilliant game. I've been so happy doing this, and I'm glad that you guys have been along for the ride. I know that some of you have definitely, like, taken some stuff away from this, like, in the sense that you've learned more things about animals, or you've learned more about animals in captivity, or in just if you just enjoy the videos, like just thanks for being here in general. So, yeah, just that's all I wanted to say. It's big, big old thanks. <laughs> so yeah, that is about it for today, guys. Um, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Of course, please do leave a comment down below. Uh, let me know what you thought of today's video. Of course, just um, just uh, leaving a, a comment of any sort or a question. And uh, yeah, and of course, subscribe if you want more Planet Zoo content. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Maybe with a thousand subscribers, which is kind of cool. <laughs> so yeah, bye everyone. <laughs>